Hi class, I'm Mike Oakes, and I am teaching alongside your teacher a unit on vocabulary. And vocabulary is about knowing words and the meanings of words. So I'm gonna be working closely with your teacher throughout this unit to help us be curious about some words that we can learn together. I'm really excited. Let's begin. Our vocabulary curriculum is called Word Love, and you are going to be word lovers if you aren't already that. But let's get started with what we're going to do today. On this first day, we are going to learn the first words in the word bank, and we're also going to practice one of the words and play a game with it. So let's do it. Let's get started. Here are the words, and I want you to think in this <clears throat> bank of words that you can see. You have the word section, exception, effect, mutter, and suggest. I want you to think to yourself, which of these words do you feel like you really know well, like you could teach it to somebody else? Which of these words do you feel like, you know, I kind of know it. I think I know it if I would read it or if somebody said it. And which of these words feel kind of new to you? I want you to think for a moment. And as always, when you're working with videos with me, I'm going to pause. And during that pausing time, I want you to be thinking talking to a partner if you're with another student, or you could talk to somebody at home if you're working from home. Okay, so those pause times mean you could think, you could talk to somebody, you could talk to the screen um, as well. Okay, how well do you know some of these words? Go for it. Okay, if my pausing isn't quite long enough, you're always welcome to pause the video um, to take more time to talk. But let's get started with our first word, which is section. A section um, is a part of something. So in the book, Because of Win Dixie, Opal finds Win Dixie in the produce section of the grocery store. As you can see, a section is a part of something. Let me hear you say the word section. All right, now let's play a game called yay or nay. If I say something that goes with or connects to the word section, pretend like you're separating things with your hands and say section, right? And if I don't, give a thumbs down, right? So if I say something that goes with section, may, pretend like you're making sections of things with your hands and say section. And if I don't, just give a thumbs down. Either way, explain your response to a partner to a friend or family member or out loud to the screen. All right, here's the first one. When you break off a piece of a Kit Kat bar. Yeah, I would say that's a section because you're breaking off a section, a part of the Kit Kat bar. All right, next one. When you eat a whole pizza. That could be either one. You could say section, or you could maybe even say give a thumbs down because if you eat the whole pizza, you're not eating the whole part of it. You're eating the whole thing. However, some of you might say, well, each slice of pizza is a section of the pizza. So even if you ate the whole thing, you eat it, you ate it section by section. So that's a key thing to know about yay or nay is you can give whatever response you'd like as long as you can show you know what the word means. Okay, last one. when you read one paragraph of a text. Yeah, section, you're reading one part of, of the text. Wonderful, so I want you to think, what are some other things that might have sections? Go ahead and share with somebody or just to the screen. And let's hear it one last time. What word means it's a part of something? Section, great. That ends day one of our word love vocabulary. I'll, say, I'll see you next time for our next um, day together. I think we're going to cover two words and play the yay or nay game again. Till then, take care. Hey, word lovers.
Mike Oaks again here. Let's get started for day two. We're going to learn a couple of new words today and play some games with them. On day two, we're going to learn the words and practice playing with the words exception and effect. Are you ready? Let's get started. All right. So in Because of Winn-Dixie, the trailer park owner, he lets Opal know, uh, he lets Opal live in the all grown up neighborhood as an exception, right? An exception is something that is allowed to go against the rules or doesn't fit with the way things usually go. So the exception is, is even though Opal is younger, she's allowed to live in the grown up section. There's a rule that there's a grown up section, but the exception is she as a kid can live there. All right. So as we said, an exception is something that's allowed to go against the rules or doesn't fit with the way things usually go. So let me hear you say the word exception. Nice. Now let's play yay or nay. If I say something that goes with exception, point a finger in the air and say exception. But if I don't, give a thumbs down. In either way, explain your response with somebody who's next to you or just out loud to the screen. Ready? Here's the first one. It says... When snack time happens in the afternoon instead of the morning. Exception or no? Yeah, exception. If, if snack time is usually in the morning, the exception would be it's in the afternoon for today. It doesn't go with the way things usually go, right? All right, next one. When you say please, thank you, or you're welcome to everyone. Ah, this one could be either, right? Like it, it could be um, not an exception if you're always saying please, welcome, or thank you. But if you're the type of person who doesn't say those things often, it would be an exception if you said for a day, please welcome and your <laughs> thank you to everyone, right? So again, remember for yay or nay, you can give any response that you want as long as you can show you know what the word means, which makes this game kind of fun. All right, last one. When the principal allows everyone to play outside all afternoon. I would say an exception because most days we're not playing outside all afternoon at school, right? <laughs> so that would probably be an exception. That doesn't way go with the way things usually go. So what are some other exceptions that you know of at school or in life? Go for it. Turn and talk. Right. And let me hear you say it one last time. What word means something that's allowed to go against the rules or doesn't fit with the way things usually go? Exception. Great. Let's do our second word for today. And that word is going to be effect. So <clears throat> in Because of Winn-Dixie, Winn-Dixie has a good effect on the preacher because the dog was making the preacher come out of his shell and become more talkative and social with his daughter. An effect is what happens because something else happened first, right? So you can see in the image of this chart, like the thing that happened was, is you cut down all the trees and the effect is there's no more trees. So effects can be good, effects can be bad. It's just what happens because something else happened, right? It doesn't really matter whether it's a good or bad thing. It just something happened first and as a result, something else happened, right? Kind of like dominoes tipping over, which is our first one. I kind of gave our yay or nay away. But let me hear you say the word effect, right? So if I say something that goes with effect, make like a little explosion with your hands, right? That would say, and say effect. And if I don't, give a thumbs down. We'll skip the first one because I gave it away. Because if you push a domino over and the rest fall over, that would be an effect, right? Because the cause was you pushed one and the effect was they all fell down. <laughs> so I gave you that one. Let's do the next one when you eat ice cream, effect or not. You know, you probably could give both responses. I would probably lean toward not because it doesn't say what caused it. But maybe if you say, if you said it, when you were hungry and then you ate ice cream or you had a sweet tooth and then you ate ice cream, then that would be effect, right? So if you explained it with a cause, you could probably give a, uh, an effect for that. Next one, when someone says thank you and you say you're welcome. Yeah, 
effect. The cause was thank you. The effect was you're welcome. Boy, I'm sure into my manners this time. So what are some effects that you also have seen in your life or at school? Turn a talk. Great. So an effect that I have is, is if I don't drink my coffee, the effect is it's going to get cold. and I'm not going to want to drink it, right? Let me hear you say the word one last time. What word means something else happens second because another thing happened first? Effect. Great. That's the end of day two. Tomorrow, we're going to learn a few more words. Till then, take care. Hey, word lovers, day three here. We're going to learn two more words and play our yay and nay game with them again. So let us get started. Let me share my screen just to prove to you that I know that we're doing that. Here we are. So we're going to cover two words today, mutter and suggest, and we'll play yay or nay with those games. Here's our first word, mutter. So in the absent author, if you read that mystery book, Dink mutters quietly to Ruth Rose and Josh that Mr. Linkletter seems suspicious. And because of when Dixie, the preacher mutters to himself as he writes in his sermons. When you mutter, you speak in a very low and quiet tone that can sometimes be hard to hear. Let me hear you say the word mutter. Pretty easy, right? Mutter. So let's play yay or nay. If I say something that goes with mutter, mutter some words under your breath, right? To your partner, to the screen. You would just be like, so that'd be muttering, right? <laughs> but with real words. <laughs> so this would be an example of muttering as I'm kind of talking under my breath, right? There you go. That's muttering. All right. So if I don't give a thumbs down, either way, you always want to explain your response to your partner or just out loud to yourself. You can be your own partner too, if you're working by yourself. Okay. Here's our first yay or nay game. Let's do it. All right. Yay or nay. When you talk to yourself when no one else is around. Yeah, most of you probably are muttering, like saying, you know, sometimes, oh, gosh, at first I have to do this today and then I have to do that. But maybe when you talk to yourself, you speak very clearly. Maybe you're saying things like, well, Mike, first thing on my list is, but most people are probably muttering to themselves when they talk to themselves, if you talk to yourself at all. Next one. When you sing along with the radio. For me, I'd say no. If I'm singing with the radio, I'm singing out loud. But maybe some of us are muttering as we sing, you know, right? Maybe we, we might mutter in a low tone if we're not very proud of our singing voices or whatever. But for me, I usually would sing out loud. I wouldn't be muttering the words. And last, yay or nay, when kid gets in trouble and says something behind the grown-up's back. Yeah, you better, that would be a mutter, right? Oh man, when I was a teacher in the classroom every day, I remember when kids would mutter <laughs> to me. Anyway, so yeah, muttering is when you're speaking low and you're speaking in a way that can be hard to hear, sometimes behind somebody's back, right? Uh, some of you might have said, no, oh, I would never do that. Or, you know, if you were to ever talk to the teacher, you'd speak in clear tones. But when are some other times, turn and talk, when are other times that you might mutter? I'm trying to think in myself when I mutter, I mostly probably mutter when I, when I talk to myself or sometimes um, sometimes if I feel like nervous is a time when I'm less clear and I mutter more, right? Or if I don't want people to hear me, like I'm kind of annoyed at them and I'm not really wanting to talk to them and I just kind of mutter under my breath, right? Um, but yeah, so let me hear you say the word one last time. What word means to speak in a very low and quiet tone that can be sometimes hard to hear? Mutter, that's right. And that will bring us to the end. Oh, <laughs> that doesn't bring us to the end. We've got one more word. Thanks for keeping me real. We got to suggest, of course. Suggest is a great word. So, in Because of Winn-Dixie, the preacher suggests that Opal pray for the mouse. When you suggest something, you offer an idea or advice to someone. Let me hear you say the word. Great. If I say something that goes with suggest, um, shrug your shoulders like you're giving a, hey, like you're giving a suggestion and say suggest, you know, suggest like that. <laughs> and if I don't, give a thumbs down.
You ready? Either way, explain your response to a partner, a friend, or family member, or to your screen out loud. Here we go. Yeah, your name. When you ignore your parents. Yeah, probably you're not taking a suggestion if you're ignoring, probably not taking any tips or advice from the parents if you're ignoring them, right? Unless that was somebody's suggestion to you, right? If somebody said, hey, I think you should ignore your parents. It's probably not a good suggestion, but it could be. You could have said, hey, it's a suggestion, right? That's what I love about yay or nay is, is you can give any response you write as long as you can show you know what the word means. All right, next one. When your friend says to wear a hat because it's cold outside. Suggest, yeah. Hey, I think you should wear a hat. It's cold outside. That's a tip. That's an advice. That's a suggestion. Last one. When a family member recommends that you try a food they think is delicious. Hey, yeah, suggest. Here's a, here's a, piece, of, here's a piece of advice. Here's a tip. Try this food, right? That's another suggestion for sure. So talk, turn to talk. What are some other things that you might suggest or that have been suggested to you? Great. Let's say the word together one last time. What word means to offer an idea or advice to someone? Suggest. All right, now we're at the end of day three for our word love. We've learned all of our five words now. So tomorrow or the next time that we work together, we will be starting to play games with all the words. And they're really fun. They're going to help us learn the words more deeply, but they're also going to help us laugh and have a good time as we're learning because is not the best way to learn is to have fun while you're doing it. I'll see you next time. Hey, Word Love team, Mike Oaks here again for our next day of vocabulary fun. And now that we've learned all of our five words for the first bend, we're going to play some games with them. And our first game is called Famous and Familiar. So let me just acquaint you with this game if you're not yet familiar with it. So Famous and Familiar is where we're going to take words from either popular culture or common events that most people participate in, most kids participate in. And I'll model one and then you and your partner are on the screen, you can work with the rest of the words connecting something. So <clears throat> if I were to take section, one of our words, and let's pick two things. So we'll pick, um, um, let's say a popular website, you know, like YouTube or something, or I could connect it to going grocery shopping. Those are the two things we're gonna pick. Um, if I were to connect a section to a popular website like YouTube, I would say, well, in one section <clears throat> of YouTube, you can um, you can read comments of what people wrote. In another section of YouTube, you can watch a video. In other sections of, of YouTube, you can save videos that you want to watch. So basically, I'm using the word section and connecting it, saying, you know, YouTube has different parts or sections. If I were to connect the word section to going grocery shopping, you know, I'd say kind of like how it was used in Winn-Dixie, like there's a produce section, there's a section for meat um, and, and, and fish and cheese, there's a section for cereal, there's a section, there's a part for checking out, right? And so you're always going to want to explain your response. And the two things we're going to connect to that you could choose to connect to are a popular website. I use YouTube, but you could pick any other popular website. Um, online, maybe it's even an app on a phone or a tablet, or you could connect the word to going grocery shopping. It's your choice. All you got to do is kind of run through the list of words and connection. So the question is, is how might each of these words connect to a popular website or app or going to the grocery store? So I did section, you could also do section, um, but you could start with some of the other ones. And I'll give you some time and kind of lead you through uh, if you'd like to go through each of the words. And all you're doing is imagining how you might connect the word to either a website or app or connect the word to something like going grocery shopping. Ready? All right. Try it with section with a partner or just out loud to yourself. And if obviously if you're going to do section, do a different examples than I did. <clears throat> All right. Try the next word. If you haven't yet, try exception. 
to a website or app or to grocery shopping. Great. Move on if you haven't yet to the next word, effect, to a website or app or connect effect to grocery shopping. Moving on to mutter, connect it to a website or app or grocery shopping. And last word, connect the word suggest to a website or app or to going grocery shopping. Okay, I'll share with you mine real quick. I'll, I'll use grocery shopping because that's probably a little bit quicker for me. <clears throat> if I were to say, how could exception go with grocery shopping? Well, maybe I usually go grocery shopping on the weekend, but maybe then I go grocery shopping on a, a weekday morning. That's an exception, right? That's not how I usually do it. Um, effect, how could I do effect with exception? Well, maybe the cause is, is I don't have a lot of food at home. And so the effect is I go grocery shopping and then mutter. How could I do mutter at grocery shopping? Oh, if I'm like looking at my grocery list and thinking, hmm, where, what else do I need? What else do I need? What else do I forget? I might be muttering to myself and then suggest at the grocery store. Maybe I could, if I'm looking for an item or I'm choosing between two items, I could ask somebody who works at the grocery store, which one should I get? Should I get the regular bananas or the organic bananas or what have you and ask them for a suggestion or a tip or advice? And that's how famous and familiar works. We're going to start with another game tomorrow. Till then, stay tuned. Be well. See you then. Hey, welcome back. Word love members. We're going to start a new game today. It's called hypothetically speaking. Hypothetical means um, an imaginary situation that could possibly happen, but it's imagined, right? Hypothetically speaking. So let me talk to you a little bit about hypothetically speaking and give you an example myself. So I'm going to name several situations that go with our five vocabulary words. And I'd like you and your partner to come up with comments of like what a person might say in that situation. So what you're going to be doing is like imagining what somebody might say out loud. I'll show you in my example. So for example, if you were asked, what might people in different sections of the library say, I might, I might reply or somebody might reply, well, if somebody's in the reading section, the thing that they might say is, no talking, right? <laughs> um, or if you're in the checkout section, what might somebody say? They might say, the librarian might say something. They say, did you find everything that you need? Right? So what you're doing is you're going to like imagine what somebody would say in the scenario. So you're kind of acting. So use voices, right? So notice I, I use the voice of like somebody who is kind of annoyed, Shh, no talking. Or I use the voice of a librarian. Did you find everything that you need? Right? So have some fun with it. All right, so, and always explain your response. So if you're in the quiet section, you'd say, shh, because you'd want people to quiet so you can concentrate on your reading. And the librarian would say, did you have everything you need? Because she wants to make sure that you, you know, had a good time at the library and found things so it was a helpful place. All right, here we go. You can get started with this one. What might someone say about the different sections of fried chicken? Oh man, I know lots of people in my life. Some people are like, oh, give me the drumstick is what somebody might say is like, don't eat the wing, that's mine. Or, you know, some people are like, I just like the dark meat. Or some other people are like, I just like the white meat. Those are all different things that I know people would probably say about fried chicken. All right. What might kids say when there's an exception at school? Wow, it depends on the exception, if it's a good or a bad one, right? Like if it's a not so good exception, it's like, oh man, but we're supposed to have gym every Tuesday. We, why don't we have it this time? They'd be, that would be an unpleasant exception. Or if it's a good exception, kids might say, yes, can we go outside for recess all day, every day? <laughs> Is what kids might say. 
Again, remember, you're imagining what people might say in the situation. So you're acting out a response. Next one, what might a principal say about the effects of running in the hallway? I'm imagining a principal would say like things like, you could hurt yourself if you're running in the hallway, or the principal might say, you know, you could really disrupt other people's learning if you're running in the hallway, right? That's some of the things they might say about the effects, because what was the cause? The cause is running. What are the effects? Hurting yourself, disrupting learning. Next one, how might a kid mutter so the teacher doesn't hear? Turn to talk. Oh, man, I've heard lots of kids mutter in my teaching career. They probably mutter things like, I didn't even do anything. Somebody else did it, you know, under their breath. Okay, next one. What might a parent say to suggest to a kid a good way to earn a pet? Again, what would a parent say to suggest to a kid a good way to earn a pet? Turn to talk. I'm imagining some suggestions a parent might say like, well, you need to be responsible. So you need to clean your room every day because you have to take care of a pet every day, blah, blah, blah. You know, something that those are things parents might say. All right. And then that's it for today. So we'll be back again tomorrow with our last day playing with the words in this bed. We'll be playing with some of these words all throughout the unit, but it's our last day playing with just these words. And uh, till then, take care. I'll see you. Hey, welcome back. Word love team. Here we are. This is our last game before we do a little bit of an assessment, see how well we know our words. I know you're going to do great. And this game is called the contingency continuum. Now, <laughs> you know, I love my vocabulary words. And so let me explain what these words mean. Contingency means it's contingent upon. That means it is sort of related to or due to. It's kind of like a, an effect word, uh, something. So um, going outside is contingent upon the weather being nice, right? If the weather's not nice, then you're not going outside. If it is contingent means it's like related or connected to. And then in this case, it's the contingency is you. It's going to be related to you. And continuum just means a line, a line of this end to this end to opposites to the middle. You'll see in a moment. So, but let me tell you about the game. I've created a continuum or a little line that shows like the sequence of likelihood of each vocabulary word. You have to reply to your partner or out loud to the screen in a way that fits with you. So for example, the question asks, how likely would you want the following in sections. And if one item was pizza, somebody might say, I would always want pizza in sections because you can't eat an entire pizza if it's not cut into sections, right? But if others might say, well, if it's just one slice, I don't need to cut my slice into sections. I can just eat the one slice, right? So it, maybe sometimes you might want to cut your pizza. So I was like, sometimes I'd want it in sections. Well, you'll see what I mean. So here's an example of a continuum. So you can see a five response would be always want in sections and a one would response would be I'd never want it into sections or parts. Now, the great thing about this game is we all might land on a different place on the continuum and that's okay as long as you explain your response. Okay, so how likely would you want the following in sections in a candy bar? Turn, turn and talk. Bubble gum, turn and talk. A loaf of bread, turn and talk. Great. So for me, a candy bar, I mean, it depends on the candy bar. So maybe like sometimes we want in sections like Kit Kats, right? Sometimes it's nice if they're broken into sections. Um, bubble gum. I don't know if I need my bubble gum into sections. Like usually it's just like you eat the gum, right? I don't need it broken up for me. And a loaf of bread. 
I usually, I, I would often want it in sections. Sometimes I can cut it myself, but I usually, I mean, I guess I'd be a four or five because I don't usually just eat the whole loaf of bread. I usually cut it into sections, into parts. So it'd probably be a five. I always want it into sections. All right. Next one. Which of the following exceptions would most or least annoy you? This time I'm just going to read all three and I'll give you some time to respond. So the first one is when you're allowed to eat candy while working once, right? Like one time you're allowed to eat candy while you're working because usually we don't, right? That'd be an exception. Do you think that's a great exception or an annoying exception? When you miss gym class, is that a great exception or an annoying exception? And when the cafeteria runs out of pizza on pizza Friday, for example, is that a great exception or annoying exception? I'll give you some time to turn and talk and to respond to these. Go for it. Okay, let's come back together. As always, if you need more time to respond to these, you can press pause on the video to do so. All right, next contingency continuum. Which would have the greatest or least effect on you, right? Being away from your parents for a week, not eating sweets for a month, going two days without watching a screen. Trying to talk. For me, being away from my parents, well, I live away from my parents now, but when I was a kid, oh man, that would be a five. You know, if I was your age, that would be a five. Not eating sweets for a month. Ooh, what kind of effect would that have on me? How would that, I, well, probably like a three or two could probably go a month, but it wouldn't be great. And then going two days with watching a screen. I mean, I don't think that would have a huge, I've gone two days without watching a screen, but maybe, I don't know, my phone, that'd be kind of hard. So maybe that'd be a four. <laughs> if <it's, if> <laughs> All right, next one. How likely would you mutter in the following situations? If you're in a library, if you're at a sports game, if you're in a class while everyone's working, trying to talk. This is an interesting one. So if I'm in a library, I'm not likely to mutter because I usually don't talk that much in libraries. But if I were to mutter, you know, I, if I were to talk, I'd be likely to mutter. So anywhere from two, three or four, right? Maybe a three. If I'm at a sports game, I'm not, I'm probably a one. I'm probably cheering loud. I'm not muttering. And if I'm in class while everyone's working, I'm, that's probably where I'm going to be a four or five. I'm going to likely mutter there if I'm talking at all, because I don't want to interrupt people's thinking as they're working, right? All right. <clears throat> Last one. How likely are you to suggest a tip or advice to someone when they're having a hard time with math, when they're having a hard time with reading, or when they're having a hard time with science? Least likely or most likely to suggest? With math, I'm probably like a two. <laughs> math was never my strongest subject. With reading, five, like reading's my thing. So yeah, if you need help with reading, that's me. Very likely to give you a tip. Science, maybe a three, two, three. Again, it's not my strongest subject, but like reading and writing, fives all the way. All right, so that is, that's it for Ben one team. So <clears throat> you'll have an assessment next with your teacher. And when we come back, we'll start Ben two. What we'll do is we'll have a whole new set of five words. We'll get to know them and then we'll play games with them. And what's great about the games is, is we'll also incorporate words from Bend one. So we don't forget what they mean. And until then, I hope you've enjoyed the bend. I've hope you'd enjoy these games and I'll see you in a little bit to start Ben two, five new words till then take care. Hey, Word Love team, welcome back. 
It's Ben too. And we're going to start some new words. This Ben, we're going to play some games with them. And as I mentioned earlier, we're actually going to be playing games with words from the first Ben as well, so that you can brush up and remember those words really well. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the entire word bank, and just kind of do a self-assessment on how well we think we know these words, even though we're going to learn them much more deeply as the unit goes on. And then we're going to focus on one of the words from the bend and we'll play a, a yay or nay game with it. Shall we get started? Let's do it. Okay. First things first, we're going to think about on this day, the word bank. Let's take a look at this word bank for Ben too. All right. And I want you to think to yourself, as you're looking at the words in this word bank, which of these words do you feel like you know pretty well? Like you use it when you talk and you use it in your writing and you could teach it to somebody else, right? Which of these words do you think that you kind of know it, but you don't usually say the word that often? You're not usually writing it that often. <clears throat> and which of these words you're not as familiar with, right? You very rarely say it. You very rarely write it. You're maybe not even sure exactly what it might mean. Here are the words. And then I want you to turn and talk with somebody or out loud to the screen, some thoughts that you have about these words. Peculiar, mumble, reason, ignorant, harsh. Take some time. How well do you think these, you know these words? Turn and talk. And let's come back together. Great. Another thing that you could think of is like, which of these words do you feel like you know best? And which one do you feel like you know, but you know least best? The point is, is that I'm not teaching you words that are totally, totally brand new to you. The point is, is you probably know some of these words a little bit, but we're going to learn them even more deeply across the days. Okay. So let's focus on the first word, peculiar. <clears throat> so <clears throat> in Because of Win dixie we miss Franny, Franny Block, remember her? She tells a story of a time she smelled the peculiar smell of a bear. If something is peculiar, it is strange and unlike anything else. Say the word with me. Let me hear you say it. Peculiar. That's right. Now let's play yay or nay. If I say something that goes with peculiar, raise your eyebrows and say, peculiar right or, you know and then if i didn't say how peculiar or peculiar <clears throat> if i don't give a thumbs down but either way um you're gonna explain your response to your partner here we go here's the first one for yay or nay when your teacher starts laughing when you ask what's for lunch My eyebrows are going up and I'm saying peculiar. That'd be a weird, unusual response for a teacher to give when you're saying, what's for lunch? And they start laughing. <laughs> All right, here's the next one. <clears throat> Yay or nay for peculiar when you go to school in the morning. I'm going to say nay to that one. However, if you said, you know, it's the middle of summer, right? Or the middle of vacation, that would be peculiar because during those times, it would be very peculiar to be going to school in the morning when there is no school or on the weekend, right? That'd be more peculiar. So remember, as always, you can give opposite responses. You just have to explain why using your knowledge of the Lord. It's what makes it fun. Last yay or nay. When you see a man walking down the street with a cat balancing on his head. My eyebrows are going up and I'm saying peculiar. That is a strange thing. In fact, in New York City in Manhattan, uh, where I live, there is a man in the West Village who walks around with a cat on a leash on his head. And he will make you, if you take a picture with him, he'll make you pay him money. <laughs> it's peculiar, right? All right. So for you, well, what are some other things in your life at school or um, at home that are peculiar? Turn and talk. All right, let me hear you say the word again. What word means something that is strange and unlike anything else? That's right, peculiar. 
And that's it for our very first day of <clears throat> coming back together with a new bend of words. Tomorrow, we'll focus on two more words, play yay or nay games with them. Till then, be well. Take care. Word love team, welcome back. It's a new day, two new words, and we're going to play yay or nay with those words. So let us get started. The next two words we're going to focus on are mumble and reason. And we're going to play yay or nay which e with each of those games. Okay. So in the absent author, if you read that mystery, Dink mumbles that he feels sick when he finds out Wallace, Wallace has been kidnapped. I feel sick, right? And because of when Dixie, Otis mumbles that maybe Opal can help out at the putt store. Well, maybe you can help out at the putt store, right? When you mumble, you speak in a low and unclear way that is hard to understand. Say the word after me, mumble. That's right. Now let's play yay or nay. If I say something that goes with mumble, cover your mouth and make mumbling, muttering noises. Well, actually make real talk. <laughs> I keep going, blah, blah, blah. But you should be saying things like, I don't know if I should do this. This seems like a bad idea. That's mumbling. All right. So if I say something that goes with mumble, mumble something, right? So maybe mumble, I am mumbling. If I don't, you would say speaking clearly, right? <laughs> right. Either way, explain your response to the partner. So we're either going to, that's mumbling or speaking clearly is going to be our two yay or nay responses. All right. Here's our first one. When you give a speech to the entire class, does that go with mumble or not go with mumble? Well, it may depend on how you feel about giving a speech, right? Um, as a good speech, you would speak clearly. Speaking clearly, you'd say. And if you're nervous about it, if you're nervous during the speech, you might be, I am mumbling right now, right? <laughs> okay, next one. Yay or nay, when you have to explain something embarrassing that happened to you. Oh, I am mumbling right now. Yeah. If you are still embarrassed about it, telling that story, you'd probably maybe mumble that story. But maybe some of you said speaking clearly, like maybe you're no longer embarrassed. And sometimes it's kind of fun and funny to tell embarrassing stories um, after a while. So again, depends on your view of whether that would fit with mumbling or not. All right. Last example, non-example, yay or nay. When kids get in trouble and the principal asks what happened. Mm, good one. That one depends. Like right? if it's me getting in trouble, I might mumble. I might say, well, we were just running in the hallway. Blah, blah, blah. Like I'd kind of be nervous. Like I was going to get trouble. But if it was me not getting in trouble, I'd say speaking clearly, they were the ones who did it. Right. So depending on <laughs> if you were getting in trouble or not, maybe you'd mumble to the principal or not. So think to yourself, what are some other times that you or others might mumble? Turn and talk. That's right. So for me, when might I mumble? I might mumble if I'm unsure or nervous. Or sometimes when I talk to myself, I mumble because I'm not really caring whether I'm speaking clearly or not. Right? Those are the times that I might mumble in my life. Okay, so let me hear you say the word again. What word means to speak in a low and unclear way that's hard to understand? Mumble the word, mumble. Now speak the word clearly, mumble. <laughs> Great, let's go to our next word. That is reason. So in the absent author, Dink, Ruth Rose and Josh have to reason to figure out the mystery of who kidnapped Wallace Wallace. And because of when Dixie, the preacher explains that when Dixie has such a fear of thunderstorms that he can't be reasoned out of it. When you reason, you think or you argue, not quarrel like a fight, but you argue means you give your view on something in a way that makes sense. So when you reason, you think or argue in a way that makes sense. Say the word after me, reason. That's right. So if I say something that goes with reason, rub your chin, nod your head and say reason, right? Like you're thinking clearly about it. If I don't, 
give a thumbs down, but either way, explain your response to yourself, to the screen, or to somebody who's with you right now. Okay, here's our first yay or nay. Let's get ourselves ready. Yay or nay, when the teacher explains why you have homework. Yeah, I'd probably say reason, right? The teacher's um, explaining in a clear way why you might have homework. Okay, next one. When a kid gets mad because you explain why pizza is delicious. And this one could go either way. You could say reason or maybe no, because it seems like if you're explaining why pizza is delicious, you're using reason, right? You're thinking in a way that and arguing in a way that makes sense. But the person who's getting mad at you, I don't know if they're being very reasonable. <laughs> you know, if you're getting mad when somebody's telling you something in a way that makes sense. So either way, it may be you are being reasonable and the person who's getting mad is being unreasonable, right? Okay. And last yay or nay. When a kindergartner says that monsters under the bed are real. Now, initially, as I was thinking of this, I would say no, because that doesn't make sense. Monsters aren't real under the bed. But what if the kid is arguing in a way that makes sense, right? Then it would be reason, right? Like if they can give arguments that make sense um, for why there's monsters under the bed, then that would be reason, right? So that could go either way as well, as long as you <laughs> know what reason means. Okay, we finished another day of word love together. And now you know more, a little bit more about mumble and reason. Tomorrow or the next day we're together. We're going to do our last two words of this bend. We're going to play year and a games. And then after that, we're going to play games with all the words that we've learned so far. Can't wait for it. See you then. All right, word love team. Welcome back for another day. We're in the midst of Ben two. We're going to go over our last two words together and play yay or nay games with them before we then play games with all of the words. We're going to play some new games that we haven't played before. It's going to be exciting, but that'll be next time we're together. This time we're together, as I mentioned, we are going to be learning about our last two words, ignorant and harsh, and then we'll play yay or nay with them. So let's get started. Let's do it. All right, first word, ignorant. In the absent author, for most of the story, Dink, Ruth Rose, and Josh are like completely ignorant of who kidnapped Wallace Wallace. In Because of When Dixie, Opal will not play with Otis and Steve Dewberry because she thinks they are ignorant. So when you're ignorant, you don't know something. Say the word after me, ignorant. That's right, ignorant. Now let's play yay or nay. If I say something that goes with ignorant, cover your ears, close your eyes and say ignorant, right? <laughs> if I don't, tap your head and say smart <laughs> or knowledgeable, right? So we say ignorant or smart or knowledgeable. All right, here we go. First one, when you know all the answers on the math test, turn and talk. Yeah, your name, ignorant or smart. That's right, right, smart. Okay, that was, that was pretty straightforward, easy. All right, let's do a trickier one. How about this one? Let's see if it's trickier. When the principal says you broke a specific school rule, but you aren't sure why, does that go with ignorant or smart or knowledgeable? Yeah, I would say ignorant because you don't know like why the rule is in place. Or maybe you could say smart. The principal's smart because they know all the rules, you know, <laughs> if you wanted to be clever. All right. And next one is when someone forgets how to say the alphabet. Yeah, I'd probably say ignorant. You don't know. You don't know or remember the alphabet. So what are some other times that people might be ignorant? Turn and talk. All right. Let me hear you say the word again. What word means you don't know something? Bingo. Ignorant. 
All right, that's word one of two. Let's go to the second word. The next word that we're going to cover today is harsh. So in Because of Winn-Dixie, Gloria Dump acts, asks Opal not to judge the Dewberry Boys too harshly, right? So if something is harsh, it is unkind and not gentle. So when she says don't judge them too harshly, it means like don't look at them in a way that's sort of mean and, and unkind to these boys. Don't think of them too meanly, right? So say, let me hear you say the word harsh. That's right, harsh. If I say something that goes with harsh, cringe your body and face, be like, ooh, that's harsh, right? <laughs> ooh, that's harsh. If I don't, say gentle, right? Maybe even like pretend you've got a little like soft pet or a soft stuffed animal, gentle. So we would be like, ooh, harsh or gentle. All right, here we go with our yay and nay game. It is when you scrape your knee on the sidewalk, harsh or gentle? That's right. Ooh, harsh. Remember to always explain why, because that if you scrape your knee on the sidewalk, that stings. That's not very gentle. <laughs> All right. Remember, as always, to explain your response. You don't just give the response. You always want to explain your response, too. When a grown-up gets mad at you for no reason. Try to talk and explain why. Ooh, yeah, that's harsh. That's not very gentle or kind. You're like, why are you mad at me? Uh, all right, last one. When you get a hug for your, from your grandma. Yeah, gentle. I would say that's gentle. That's not very harsh, right? <laughs> Unless it was like a huge bear hug and you like couldn't breathe, then ooh, that would be, <laughs> that might be a little harsh, right? Remember, you can always give the clever opposite answer as long as you can show you know what the word means. So for those of you out there, like have fun with this. Remember that. You can give the opposite answer of what it suggests. Okay, so, but turn and talk. What are some other things that might be harsh in school or in your life? Turn and talk. Okay, what word means not gentle or mean? Let me hear you say it again. That's right, harsh. All right, team, we did it. I'm proud of the hard work we've been putting into this. We've learned a new set of words for Ben 2. And now we're going to spend a few days playing games with these words, these five words that we've learned, but also the first five words from the first Ben's. It's going to be really exciting for that next game that we're going to play. It's called Put In a sub and I will explain it the next time we're together. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Welcome back, Word Love team. Good to be with you. Good to see you. We're going to play a game with all of our words now. We're going to be playing um, a game called Put in a Sub. So let me explain Put in a Sub to you. New game. Maybe you've played it if you've done some of the other word love units before. It's a classic. So in put in a sub, what, what happens is I'm going to say a sentence, one that goes with each of our words. And we're going to be using words from Ben's one and Ben two. And with your partner, I want you to restate the exact same sentence. But the only thing you change it is you use one of the vocabulary words. And I, I'll help by giving a little bit of a bolded, like um, one word or several words that you'll want to replace. Um, and always explain why you substituted that vocabulary word into the sentence. So, for example, if I said the sentence, let's meet in the games part of the amusement park, I would look at the list of words and see which one best fits the sentence and then substitute that words that goes in the sentence, which might sound like this. Let's go to the games section of the amusement park, right? Because section means that it's a part of something. So we're going to try it with our partners or just try it by yourself. Say it out loud to the screen. And again, we're going to have words from Ben 1 and Ben 2 together. Ready? Here we go. First put in a sub is speak up and don't mumble. Restate the sentence using one of our words and say why.
Yeah, some of you may have realized it would be speak up and don't mutter, right? That mumble and mutter are synonyms, right? Um, to one another. All right, nice one. Let's see here. It says, the basketball coach was rough to his players. Put in that sub and explain why. So the basketball coach was... Yeah, if he was rough, he'd be mean and ungentle and kind. So that means he would be harsh to his players, right? If he's being sort of rough and, you know, coaching them roughly and meanly, that would be harsh to his players. Okay, next one. <clears throat> what a strange dream I had. Put in a sub and explain why. What a blank dream I had. Yeah, peculiar, right? What a peculiar dream I had. You'd say that one because peculiar means like unusual and strange and not like anything else. Next one. The result was a big mess everywhere. The blank was a big mess everywhere. All right, I'd probably say effect, right? The effect was a big mess everywhere because an effect is a result of something that was caused, right? So if the cause was <laughs> little kids in a room, <laughs> the result, the effect was a big mess everywhere. All right, next one. Don't be uneducated, go to school. Put in a sub, explain why. Don't be blank, go to school. Yeah, don't be ignorant. Go to school, right? Ignorant means you don't know something, right? And so if you're saying don't be ignorant, where's the place you go to not be ignorant and to know things? School. Great. Next one. Don't mutter. I can't hear you. Don't blank. I can't hear you. Yes, you got it. Don't mumble. I can't hear you because mumble and mutter are kind of synonyms, right? Okay. Next one. What's your argument for why cats are best? What's your blank for why cats are best? Put in a sub. Say why. Oh, there could be two. I think the best one was probably reason because reason means to think clearly in an argument, right? But you could maybe make an argument. <laughs> you could reason that suggest could work. Like what's your suggestion? for why cats are the best. I think the best response is probably reason, but what's great about putting a sub is you could have two different responses as long as you can explain why. That's all that matters. Okay, I think that's it. I think we did it all. So we're gonna play a new game. You got a little sneak peek of tomorrow, um, tomorrow's game. We're gonna play a game that's called who, what, when, where, why, how, and you're gonna start imagining how our words can exist in the world right now. I've been giving you all the examples mostly for the most part, but you get to make them tomorrow or the next time we're together. Till then, be well, take care, word love team. Hey, word love team, good to be back, good to see you. Let's play another game with our words. This time, our game is gonna be called who, what, when, where, and why. And what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna imagine how our words can fit into different scenarios in different parts of life. Because the goal of this is for you to be able to see how our words can be transferred and used. Because I want you to not just know these words, I want you to use them when you're talking. I want you to use these words when you're writing. So it starts by having fun and using the words in games. So let me teach you about the game specifically though. So I'm gonna ask you some questions about these vocabulary words that we've been learning in Ben 2, but also in Ben 1. These questions are gonna present various scenarios that will show each world, word in the real world. And after I ask each question, turn and tell your partner or say out loud to the screen your response and say why. So for here's an example. If, if a question is asked, how might you break a sandwich into sections? A response might be, you can break a sandwich into sections with a knife because you can cut it into parts. Sections are parts, right? All right, look out for words from both bend one and bend two. Here we go. Who might think 
that a clown looked peculiar. Turn a talk. Great. So you might say something. Maybe somebody who finds clowns kind of creepy and weird. They don't spend a lot of time with clowns <laughs> or anything. They're like clowns look kind of weird with all that that face paint, and makeup, and the, the big shoes and everything. All right. Next one. What might a firefighter mumble to her boss? Turn and talk. Say why. Good one. Gosh, this one stumps me. What might a firefighter mumble to her boss? Maybe something like, you know, I'm sorry I was late to the fire. No, I'm sorry I was late. Something like that. They mumble something because you mumble usually when you're nervous or scared or uncertain. So there would probably be some reason like maybe she was late to a fire, right? I'm so sorry I was late. I was, I, I didn't hear the alarm, right? Whatever it was. That was a tricky one for me. <laughs> and I wrote it. <laughs> All right. Here's the next one. When might you give reasons for why ice cream is delicious? When might you give reasons for why ice cream is delicious? Turn and talk, say why. Mm, this is a good one. I would say like if you're at a restaurant, you kind of decide like which dessert should you get? Should you get the ice cream? Should you get the cookies? Should you get the cake? And like everybody's got a different opinion. They'd be like, look, ice cream is the best. Um, you got to get this. You don't want to get the other ones. You want to get ice cream because it's hot out because it's sweet. And, you know, that might be when you give reasons. It's like when you're at a restaurant and you're trying to convince people to get the ice cream for dessert and not just the, um, the other desserts. Next one, where might someone feel ignorant about video games? Where might someone feel ignorant about video games? Try to talk, say why. Yeah, so maybe you're at a video game store with a parent who doesn't know so much about video games, <laughs> and they're asking, like, gosh, well, wh which games should I get? Why should I get this? Is this appropriate? Like, I feel like if you have a video game store and a parent's with a kid who knows a lot about, maybe the parent's a little bit ignorant about video games, possibly, is what I might say. All right. Next one. Why? Why would someone only want to sit in one section of the movie theater? Turn and talk. Say why. Oh, man, I've got a personal connection with this one. I don't like sitting way up front because then the screen's like in your face and you can't see everything. It's too much. I also don't like sitting in the middle because sometimes I might need to like get up, get more food or go to the restroom or whatever. So I like to sit on the aisle so I can get out pretty easily. So that's why I would sit in those sections of the restaurant because you have very specific reasons. Reason, have we done reason yet? For why we would, why I would sit in a particular part or section. All right, I guess we didn't have reason, did we? Or did we already do reason? Yeah, we <laughs> Anyway, we've got a new word, uh, a new game tomorrow. It's called Does X and Y. And I'll explain a little bit more then, but it's basically now we're gonna take our two words, we're gonna mash them together and imagine how they exist in the real world. Till then, be well, take care, and I'll see you next time. Word love team, welcome back. I can't believe it. We've come to the end of Ben 2. We're going to play a game called Does X and Y, and then you'll have a little quiz probably with your teacher, and then we'll come back for Ben 3, learn a whole new set of words, and play new games with them. Really exciting. But before we go to that Ben 3, let's play one last set of games called does x and y and in this game we're going to take two of our words and we're going to mash them together and think about how could they exist in the real world let me explain a little bit more about what i mean in does x and y so what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask you questions with two vocabulary words put together with your partner turn and talk about your responses and as always we don't just give our response we say why right i said this because so, for example, if one of the questions is, can someone mumble in a peculiar way? Those would be the two words we're putting together. A reply might be, yes. Somebody could talk in a low way that might sound really weird. Like, maybe you're mumble. like, what would a weird mumbling sound like? It'd be like, I am mumbling right now. Because you're like, 
even though mumbling is technically low, it's hard, also hard to hear. Or maybe the mumbling could be really low. It could be like, hello, we're mumbling. <laughs> Those are kind of peculiar mumbles, right? Um, or maybe it could sound weird in some other way, right? So yeah, I would say you could mumble in a peculiar way. All right, you get what I mean, though. We're going to put two of the words together, and you're going to explain why they could maybe go together. Ready? This one's tricky, but fun. Let's do it. First one. Can you reason with an ignorant person? Turn to talk. Say why. Yeah. Can you share something like an argument in a clear thinking way to somebody who doesn't know something? Absolutely you can. Will you convince them? <laughs> it depends. Sometimes somebody who's ignorant is receptive to the thing you're reasoning about. And sometimes an ignorant person is not. Like if you try to explain something to them, they'll just be more ignorant about it sometimes, right? All right, next one. Should you be harsh to someone you find peculiar? Turn to talk, explain why. your response might be something like, you know, probably shouldn't be too harsh to anybody, right? But especially anyone we might perceive as, you know, unusual or, you know, that's not nice. You know, that's not an, un that's not a very kind thing to do. So I would say probably the answer is no, you should not be harsh. We want to be welcoming and understanding and make sure everybody feels like they're a part of a community, right? <clears throat> Here's another one. Can someone give a reason for a suggestion? Turn to talk, say why. Yeah, absolutely, right? If your suggestion is, is like, I think you should try this new, you know, video game, you could say one reason why is because it's four player or whatever. Lots of you can play with all your friends, right? So yeah, of course, when you give a tip, you could always like say why, <laughs> give a good reason for it. Yeah, next one. Should you be harsh with someone who is ignorant? Right, as we mentioned earlier, it's probably a good rule of thumb if you're not harsh to anybody at any time, right? Especially if somebody doesn't know something. But sometimes if people don't know things and they should know them, right? Like, I think sometimes um, when it comes to the law, like if you don't know you broke a law, you might be, things might be treated harshly by the legal system. Be like, it doesn't matter if you don't know the law, that's the law, you can't break it. So, you know, you could say either side, like we should probably not be too harsh to anyone, but sometimes if you don't know something, it can be a harsh lesson either way, right? All right, next one. Can a section of something be peculiar? Turn to talk, say why. Yeah, of course. I guess thinking of the example is what's tricky for me. Could a part of something be peculiar? I mean, I guess you could look at these two examples. Like, could you make bake a pie and like part of the pie is kind of like messed up and weird and the rest is normal? Yeah. Or you look at the berries. Like maybe you have a berry that just the part of the berry is weird and the rest of it looks normal. So I could use the examples that are right here. So a, a part of something could certainly be unusual, right? Okay. Next one is, when might an ignorant person mumble? Trying to talk, say why. Mm. You might said something like, ignorant person might mumble if um, somebody's really grilling them and asking them questions about something that they don't know. Like, explain your answer. What do you mean? Do, do you know more about this? And they might be like, oh, I, uh, I think that this might be, they might start mumbling. Um, if somebody's like really pressing them for a response, right? Okay, next one. Can someone mumble harshly? Turn talk, say why. I think so. Yeah, if you're mumbling and you're mad at somebody, like especially maybe like a grown up, like you could be like, man, I'm so mad right now. That's the worst thing ever. You could definitely mumble kind of harshly and meanly about someone, right? All right. Well done. Word love team. We did it. 
We've gone through the first two bends. We've gone through 10 words that you know a lot more deeply now. You're going to have a little assessment with your teacher. And when we come back, we're going to learn our fi last five words. Play gate, learn them well, play games with them. Till then, be well. I'll see you in a couple days. Word love team, can you believe it? We're in Ben three. We are going to be learning five new words and playing games with all the words. But first, we're going to do like we do for each bend. And we're going to think about the words as a whole, how well we think we know them, which we know best, which we know least best. And I think I'll start us off with one of the words again today. So let's take a look at today's today's fun. So yeah, introduce the word bank and I'll teach you one of the words. So here's the word bank of words that we have. And as always, these are words that you might know or you might be familiar with. And so when I share these words with you, the point isn't like, oh, this is a brand, totally brand new word, although it might be. The point is we're going to learn this word deeply because I and your teacher want to hear you use this when you talk in class, outside of class. Your teacher and I want to see you using these words when you're writing. That's the goal. We want you to learn it really deeply. So right now, think about which of these words do you feel like you know best and which of these words you might know it, but maybe you know at least best, or maybe you don't know it. And that's okay too, because we're, as you know, we're going to be learning the words and playing games with them. Here are the words, and then I want you to talk about them. The words are nudge, idle, theme, arrange, and desperate. Which of these words do you feel like you know best or least best? Which of these words do you use and not use? Okay, turn and talk. All right, let's do it. Let's start with the first word, nudge. Let me talk to you about it. So in the absent author, Dink kind of nudges Josh and Ruth Rose when he has to tell them a secret. In, <coughs> excuse me, in Because of Win Dixie, Win Dixie nudges Opal, <laughs> I'm nudging with my nose, with his wet nose, right? Because that's how a dog would nudge with their nose. When you nudge someone, you might push them or touch them gently. That's why it's a nudge, just a gentle push, gentle touch, either to get somebody's attention, like the dog, or to get them to do something, right? You know, like the dog too. You know, if the dog wants you to feed them, they might nudge you. <laughs> All right, let's play yay or nay with our word nudge. If I say something that goes with nudge, pretend to nudge somebody with your elbow. Now, if you're sitting next to somebody, don't actually nudge them, <laughs> but you can like kind of pretend to, or you could go like this. That would be kind of a nudge, right? Not necessarily a poke, but like a, just a nudge. It's gentle, right? If I don't give a thumbs down, but either way, as always explain your response, right? Give a response, explain your response. All right, here we go. Yay or nay with nudge. You ready? Okay. When you want some, when you want someone to ask the teacher for extra recess, is that a nudge or not? Give your response. Explain why. Yeah, I would say nudge. You're trying to nudge them, like, hey, will you? And by the way, a nudge doesn't have to be. Um, physical a nudge could be like verbal like if you're just trying to gently get somebody to do something that's also a nudge too right so if you're like hey why don't you ask the teacher for extra recess that's technically a nudge but you could have started off by like maybe like hey what it, go ask him for recess right all right next one nudge when you ignore your parents nudge or no say why Yeah, I'd probably say no. Like if your parents are trying to talk to you, maybe they're trying to nudge you. And you're not paying attention to them. That's probably not a nudge. All right. Next one. When you touch a parent's elbow to ask them something, is that a nudge or no? Say why.
right? Yeah. If you gently touch somebody or push someone to ask them or get them to do something or get their attention, that by definition is a nudge. That's a nudge for sure. So when are some times that you might nudge someone or someone might nudge you? Turn and talk. And what word means to gently push or touch someone to get their attention or to get them to do something? Let me hear you say it. That's right. Nudge. Great job. So that's our first day in Ben 3. Tomorrow or the next day we're together, we're going to do two more of the words and play yay or nay. Till then, take care. Be well. Hey, team. Mike here again, and we are going to continue with our words. We've got two new words today. We're going to play our yay or nay game together with them. And those two words are these. We're going to learn the words idle more deeply, and we're going to learn the word theme more deeply. Even if you kind of already know these words a little bit, here we go. So let's start with the word idle. I love this image of this cat who's just idle here. <laughs> so in Because of When Dixie, the preacher says that other people's problems should not be the subject of idle conversation, right? When something is idle, it's like lazy, inactive, or unmoving. So if you're just having idle conversation, like you're not really doing anything, it's not really important conversation, right? To like gossip about other people. It's kind of doesn't, it doesn't move anything, doesn't go anywhere. It's kind of lazy. Okay. So say the word after me, idle. Great. So let's play yay or nay. If I say something that goes with idle, lean back like you're relaxing and say idle. If I don't, give a thumbs down. As always, when you give your response, right? Explain your response as well. All right. Here's our first one. When you do chores all day at home, idle or no, say why. Ah, this one could be two responses. Like while you're doing the chores, probably not very idle because you're moving around doing chores. But maybe when you're done with chores, you lean back and you do you idle around because you finished your chores, right? So as always, as we know, you could give opposite answers. As long as you can explain your response and your response shows that you know what the word means. All righty, next one. When you play video games all day at home, idle or no? <laughs> this one probably depends on how you view video games, but I would say it's definitely idle if you're just sitting around not really doing much playing video games. But for some of you, you love your video games. You're probably like, man, it's, video games are active. Like you're doing something. It's fun. But <laughs> probably most grownups say you're sitting on your bottom playing most video games. You're being idle. <laughs> All right. Next one. When you see the same neighbors outside chatting all day. Idle or no. Interesting one. This could be either. I guess it depends on what they're talking about. If they're just talking about any little thing and they're just kind of talking all day, probably idle. We're just going to be kind of not really doing much, just chatting about everything. But maybe they're talking about something important in the neighborhood, right? That wouldn't be idle. Maybe they're making a plan for a big party or something. That's not idle. That's a, that's like um, they're getting pretty active there. So it depends on what they might be talking about, whether it's idle <laughs> talk all day. So when are some other times that you or somebody else might be idle. Turn to talk. I like to be idle in the evenings when I'm reading. It's a nice time for me to be idle. So let me hear the word. What word means lazy, inactive, or unmoving? That's right, idle. All right, let's look at our next word, theme. So in Because of Winn-Dixie, Sweetie Pie asks Opal what the theme of her party is. And when we read, what was it, um, The Absent Author, one of the themes of the book is to never give up in pursuit of a mystery, right? Never give up. Um, a theme is a central message or idea of something. So you could have a theme of a party, right? 
what's the theme of your party? What's the big idea of your party? Or you give like a theme of a book. What's like the lesson, the big idea of the book, the lesson that you could learn. Let me hear you say the word theme. That's right. Theme. If I say something that goes with theme, just say, give a thumbs up and say theme. All right. Maybe go theme, right? <laughs> Let's do that. You go theme. If I don't give a thumbs down, but either way, whether you do the, whatever response, you want to say why you gave the response that you did to show, you know, what theme means. Okay. Here's our first yay or nay. When you figure out a book's lesson is treat others like you want to be treated. Theme or no, say why. theme that's literally never you know, like treat others like you want to be treated is the lesson of the book that's what a theme is the big idea is treat others like you want to be treated okay next one is when you figure out the character trait of the main character of a book theme or no probably no because it's just a trait but maybe you could um, relate it to theme. Like if a character is persevering and like the lesson is to like to persevere in the face of troubles, then yeah, you could say theme. So that one could be either one, as long as you can explain it. All right. And the last yay or nay for today is when you go to a dance titled under the sea and everyone is dressed up like sea creatures theme or no. Yeah, I think you say theme, like, remember, theme is like the big idea of something, you know, if the big idea is under the sea, that's the theme of the party. All right. So when are some other times you might encounter a theme or interpret a theme in life or in books? T trying to talk. Yeah, every time you read a, a fiction book, certainly you have a theme, right? So what word means the central message or idea of something? Let me hear you say it. That's right. Theme. Okay. We did it. We finished going over words two and three for Ben three tomorrow or the next time we're together, we're going to look over the last two words. We're going to play yay or nay. And then after that, we're going to play games with all the words, brand new games from this unit. And we're going to have a lot of fun with it till then be well, take care. And I'll see you later. Word love team, so excited to be back together. We're going to go over our last two words from Ben 3, and we're going to play yay or nay with them. Should we get started? Let's do it. So the two words that we are going to learn more deeply and play yay or nay with are arrange and desperate. So without further ado, let's get started with arrange, right? So in the absent author, Wallace Wallace arranges to travel to Dink's hometown. In Because of Win Dixie, Opal promises to work for one week for free, arranging things for Otis at the pet store. When you arrange things, you get them ready or you put them in order. Let me hear you say the word arrange. That's right. If I say something that goes with arrange, because we'll play yay or nay now, uh, pretend that you're like organizing things with your hands, right? Well, let's say this is like arranging, right? You're arranging things and say arrange. If I don't, give a thumbs down. But either way, whether you say arrange or thumbs down, explain your response. Shall we get started with our first yay or nay? Let's do it. Okay. Arrange or not when your room is a mess. <laughs> this could be either, right? Like if you're cleaning up your room, you're arranging it. But if you leave it a mess, no. <laughs> Next one. When you make a plan for all the rides you'll go on at the amusement park, arrange or no? Oh, yeah, I would definitely say arrange. You're like arranging a plan for like what rides you're going to go on, where the rides are, maybe the order of the rides you're going to go in. You're definitely arranging, right? Last, yay or nay for this word. When you organize all your school stuff in your book bag or desk. Yeah, arrange for sure, because you're putting all your stuff in order, right? You're getting them ready. All right. So what are some other things that you might arrange? Turn to talk.
All right. What word means to get things ready or put things in order? Let me hear you say it. Arrange. Great. Well done. Let's move on to our next word. And that word is desperate. Okay. So in Because of Winn-Dixie, Opal desperately wishes she knew where her mama was so she could join Opal at the party. In The Absent Author, Dink is desperate to figure out what happened to Wallace Wallace. When you're desperate, you have a big need or a desire for something, a big need. Sometimes it's like so big, you're almost in trouble, right? So let me hear you say the word desperate. It's desperate, right? If I say something that goes with desperate, clasp your hands together and cry out desperate, right? <laughs> if not, don't say anything, but either way, explain your response to your partner, right? Desperate or thumbs down and explain why. First one is when you really want some candy, but there's none to be found. Desperate or no, say why. <laughs> yeah, probably you're all going like desperate for candy because if you, there's no candy around and you really want it or need it, you'd be desperate for it. Yeah. Next one. When you eat all the pizza that you want, desperate. Or no, say why. If you wanted pizza and you ate it all, you're probably not desperate for it. So I'd say no, right? And last one, when you haven't eaten in forever and you're starving, desperate or no, say why. Oh, yeah. Desperate for sure. <laughs> You're desperate for food. You haven't eaten for a while. So when are some other times that you might be desperate? Turn to talk. Oh, man. Sometimes when I eat food and I don't have any water with me, my throat gets dry and I'm like desperate for some water to wash the food down for sure. That's a time like it's like peanut butter, especially that's the time I get desperate for water. All <laughs> right. Or when on a hot summer day. All right. So let me hear you say the word again. When's what word means that you have an urgent desire or need for something desperate. That's right. Well, well done. Word love team. We've done it. We've gone over all five of our Ben three words. And now we're going to play games and these games are not going to be just with Ben 3. Oftentimes, they'll be with all 15 words that we've learned. And the reason why is going back over words that you've learned previously helps you keep remembering them when you keep using them. And I think our game is going to be a matching mentions game. So we'll be matching some of the words to a comment. All right. Till then, be well. Take care. I'll see you later. Word love team. Here we are. Let's play some games with all of our words. Today's game is called matching mentions. And in matching mentions, I'm going to make a number of comments. And I want you and your partner to match the vocabulary word that best fits the comment. And as always, explain your response. So for example, if I say, um, if somebody says, how strange that my friend never said hello when walking by me down the street, I look at the list of words and I think, hmm, I think peculiar because peculiar means strange and unusual, be unusual for a friend to not say hi, right? So I would just say peculiar matches that because of that reason, right? As always, as you can see, we have words from all three bends going here. All right, here's the first that we'll look at. It says, the mention is this. If somebody says this, what word would you match with this? I know those are the rules, but today things are different. What word matches and why? I would probably say exception, remember? Because exception, think all the way back from band one. Exception means when something goes against the rules or isn't fitting with the way things usually go, right? All right, next one. Excuse me, will you buy me some ice cream? What word would that fit and why?
Mm, this would probably be nudge, right? If you're trying to nudge somebody, you're trying to get them to do something. And remember, a nudge can be a physical nudge or a nudge could just be with words. You can nudge somebody by, if you're asking them gently and kindly to do something, that's a nudge, right? Okay, next one. The mention is this, what word fits with it? What's your argument for more screen time? What word fits and why? Yeah, probably reason, because reason means to think clearly and give an argument, right? So you probably say reason would be the best fit here. Okay, next word. You haven't done anything all day. What word that fits and why? Could be a couple words here, right? Like it's probably idle because being idle is like being inactive, not doing anything. But if somebody said this kind of meanly, it might be harsh, right? You could say, oh, if they were really mean when they said that, that would be kind of harsh. But I think the, the most, the biggest one is idle, probably. Next one. What lesson does the character learn in this book? What word fits and why? Could be a couple. It's probably theme, right? Because that's what theme means is like the lesson or the central idea. But you could say maybe ignorant. Maybe somebody doesn't know the lesson. That's why they're asking. Because ignorant means to not know something. All right, next one. Whoa, that was not nice. What word fits and why? probably harsh because harsh means not nice but you could make the case for effect because if somebody was being mean and harsh the effect would be maybe somebody speaks up and says hey that's not nice the causes being harsh the effect is hey i'm going to say something about that don't be harsh right so you could make the case for effect do you see how when you're playing these games you could use different words you could give a different response as long as you're explaining it using your knowledge of the word you could be really creative okay i'm trying to organize my calendar what word fits and why? Probably arrange, right? Because arrange to means put things, get things ready, put things in place, that thing. But I guess it could be effect. Like if your calendar is not arranged, the effect is you got to arrange your calendar, right? I really, really, really need to be on a beach right now. What word fits and why? Yeah, probably desperate. But again, if maybe the cause is it's really cold out and the effect is somebody's like wishes they were at the beach. So you could make the case for both, but it's probably desperate because they're so desperate to be at the beach. They really need it. Great job. So that finishes our matching mentions game tomorrow or the next time we're together. We'll be playing a fun job. This is like one, this is like kids' favorite game. It's called Whose Job Is It Anyway? And in this game, I'll give you, I'll match you some words with some of the jobs, and you'll think about how do these words go together in the real world. I'm really excited for it. Till then, be well. Take care. See you later. Hi, Word Love Team. Today, we're going to play one of my favorite games. It is called Whose Job Is It Anyway? Let me tell you a little bit about one of my favorite games. Well, <laughs> I'm giving you a little sneak peek there. So in the game, whose job is it anyway? I'm going to put together different types of jobs with our vocabulary words. And I, when I put the two words together, the job and the word, I want you to turn and talk about how those two words could go together in the real world, right? So for instance, if I held up, uh, if I said the, the job was chef and I put chef next to peculiar, I would say, well, how could chef and peculiar to go together in the real world? I might respond, well, it would be peculiar for a chef to hate food, <laughs> right? That would be, wouldn't that be strange if a peculiar, if a chef hates the things that they're cooking? <laughs> that would be weird. That would be unusual. Usually chefs love the things that they're cooking. Okay. So as I'm doing this, I'm going to put together a word and a vocabulary word and a job. And I want you to think, how would these words go together in the real world? Here we go. First one is, why might a postal worker be desperate? Turn and talk. Hmm. 
Mm, good one. I wonder if like maybe they're really trying to get the mail to somebody, but there's a big scary dog that's <laughs> barking at them and they don't know what to do because they have to deliver the mail, but the dog is really scary. That maybe then they'd be desperate, right? How do I get this mail in? Next one. What might a firefighter try to arrange? Turn to talk. Yeah, they might, they might have to arrange like their clothes because they have to get their clothes on really quickly. So maybe they fold them up in a particular way. If you've ever seen fire hose, it probably has to be arranged and, and folded up in a way so it can be pulled out really easily. Um, maybe they have to arrange like where they're going to drive. They have to make a plan for where they're going to drive. Lots of things that firefighters could arrange and get ready. Yeah. Next one. Who might a cashier try to nudge? Now, remember, a cashier is somebody who's behind a counter who takes your money when you're buying something. Who might a cashier try to nudge? Turn to talk. Well, yeah, as you can see in this example, the cashier could nudge somebody like, hey, are you paying attention? Like sometimes if you're not paying attention, maybe somebody's on their phone and they're like, hey, are you going to buy something? <laughs> are you, do you have anything that you'd like to put on the counter that I can ring up? Then they might nudge somebody gently. Next one. What might a lawyer find peculiar? Turn to talk. Well, if a lawyer is doing a case in a courtroom, maybe there's a piece of evidence that's really peculiar and weird and they don't know what to do with it, right? That's a weird piece of evidence. What is it? Let's not use it because it's too weird. I don't know what to do with it. That's something I might think of. Next one. What might be the theme of a book about an athlete? I'm trying to talk. Well, wow, I'm thinking of athletes and they have to really train hard and work hard to become a really good athlete. So maybe the theme or the central message or idea of an athlete would be like work hard, never give up would be like probably a theme of an, a story about an athlete. All right. How might a police officer be ignorant? Turn a talk. Ooh, what if a police officer, I'm thinking, like shows up to the scene of a crime and one person's like, they did it. And the other person's like, no, they did it. Like, they'd be like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what, who's wrong here. I'm not sure because everybody's saying a different thing. That might maybe is a time that they're ignorant. All right. Next one. Why might a doctor be idle? Turn and talk. Yeah, why might a doctor be sort of lazy and unmoving? Maybe if they have like no patients scheduled that day, maybe they just sort of chill. Maybe they're on vacation, right? Because <laughs> I know doctors work pretty hard, right? That's maybe when they're idle. All right. And next one, last one is what might a chef suggest? Turn to talk. Was that even showing up on the screen? There we go. What might a chef suggest? Turn to talk. Mm, well, if you go to a chef's restaurant, they might be like, you can even see in the example, maybe this is a chef saying, would you like pizza? Or maybe you should try the burger. They're both delicious. Might I suggest the burger today? Blah, blah, blah. Well, they might suggest some, like different kinds of food that they really like making. All right. Well done. Readers. Class. Word love team. Can you believe it? We've got one more game left to play from this entire unit. I'm really excited. We've learned these words so well. And I can't wait to ring it out with this, the final game. Till then, be well. I'll see you later. Take care. Hey, Word Love team. Welcome back. This is our last day together. And on this day, we have a game where we're going to play with as many of the words as possible. And it's called a game called Mashup and Remix. And we're going to put two of the words together and see how they could exist in the real world. It's kind of tricky, but it's fun. That's our last time for this game together. I'm going to miss you unless we come back for another unit. I hope we do. I think we will. All right. So let me tell you a little bit about the game Mashup Remix, and then we'll play it. 
So in the game mashup remix, what I hope to do is, and I'm going to ask you, how are these two words connected or related? And then you're going to turn and talk and explain your response. For example, if I mashed up these two words here, right? Like nudge and idle and think, how would they go together in the real world? I might think, well, if you are being idle and just lying around doing nothing, maybe somebody would might kind of like nudge you and like, get up, like, hey, get up, <laughs> stop being idle. Let's go outside and play, All right? That's an example. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna mash the two words together and you can say, how could these words exist in the real world? Here we go. How might these two words exist in the real world? Arrange and theme. Turn and talk. Well, if we're thinking of the example from Opal, right? If she's arranging a party and there's a theme to the party, right? If your theme is like Halloween, you have to arrange that theme of the party because the theme is a central idea. If you're thinking of a, in a book, like how would you arrange the theme? Like maybe you're arranging all your evidence for the theme. Like, oh, here's my evidence for never give up. Here's my evidence for never give up. That, that might be the way you arrange it. All right, next one. How might these two words go together in the real world? Desperate and nudge. Trying to talk. I mean, I might even use some of the examples in these images right here. Like if somebody's desperate for the bathroom and the bathroom's closed, you might like nudge and be like, hey, there's another bathroom around the corner, right? Hey, give them a little nudge. You're desperate. The, ba the other bathroom's right over there. <laughs> that might be an example. Okay, next to mashup words. How might these two words go together in the real world? Ignorant and idle. Turn and talk. I don't know. Maybe, again, I could use the images in, in the, the, the charts here. Like, maybe you don't know your bird has flown away yet. You're ignorant. And so you're just laying around, not looking for your lost pet. <laughs> you're just being idle until you realize that it's gone, right? All right. How might these two words go together in the real world? Nudge and arrange. Turn and talk. Again, it, sometimes I just use the charts to help me think of these things. Like say, like you need to get the table set for, you know, dinner and you need some help. You might like nudge somebody. You might be like, hey, can you help me set the table? Give them a little nudge, right? Help me arrange what's going on in the table, All right? How might these two words go together in the real world? Desperate and idle. Ooh, tricky one. Ooh, this one's gonna be fun. Turn to talk. Hmm, how might you be desperate or idle? Well, this one, sometimes you might be so desperate for something, you don't do anything about it because you're so desperate, right? Or maybe, let's think the other way. If you be, are spending all your time being lazy and unmoving and not doing anything, eventually it'll make you desperate for something, right? If you're just lying around all day, eventually you're gonna be desperate to get away from your boredom, <laughs> right? Okay, next one. How might these two words go together? in the real world, nudge and suggest, turn to talk. I mean, I think even by definition, if you're giving a suggestion to somebody like, hey, I think you should try this new cookie, right? That's kind of a nudge, you're trying to get them to do something. So it's almost like by definition, a suggestion is kind of a nudge in a way, right? Next one, how might these two words go together in the real world? Theme and desperate, turn and talk. Well, if I'm reading a book, there might be a character who's really desperate and maybe they learn something about how to go through desperate hard times. Maybe the theme is like, you know, don't give up when life is hard. When you're desperate, don't give up, right? Because so desperation could be a part of a theme of something. And that's it. We did it. Can you believe that we got this in? 
that's our unit together. Now you'll probably have one more day where you show your teacher all that you've learned and all that you know of these 15 words that we learned together, but you should be so proud of all the hard work and learning that you put into learning these words. And now these are words that you can use when you're talking to your friends and talking to your family and talking at school. These are words that you can use in your writing. Maybe you're writing a literary essay. These are some good words that you could put in your literary essay. You are so much more powerful now, now that you know these words. So proud of this hard work that you've put in. We've had so much fun together. I hope to see you for another word love unit. Till then, <laughs> my screen says I'm done too now too. It's falling over. <laughs> well, I better turn off the video before the screen falls on top of me. Hey, be well. Take care. I hope to see you later. Bye-bye.